Right, hello everybody. Welcome to the first round of the World Cup. Match between RTSD and Thessa. Um, RTSD with a necromantic team chose to receive in normal weather, but then he got the pouring rain, which is always annoying, isn't it? Um, he hasn't played in Champs Ladder, and, but was one of the three UK BBL qualifiers. Um, he was an OFL, so I, I actually knew he was quite good. Um, and then he's playing Fessa with the Humans, who's got a 68% win rate in Champs Ladder. He was one of the four Rebel qualifiers, in fact, winning the Rebel qualifier of 130 people. So, you know, Fessa, pretty good there. So this should be a good game, shouldn't it? Um, this was cleared at some ungodly hour, I think. This is why I didn't cover it live. I like I like I like blitzing with a zombie and not get frenzy trapped. You don't see that every day, do you? Um, so, as ever with Necro, you've got to sacrifice something. And if you want three rerolls, well, you either want two rerolls or three, whatever. Um, what he sacrificed to get for the third reroll is he's only got one white. Block on both of his fleshies. I, I'm not that big a fan of block tackle. I'm not that big a fan of. Naked Mighty Blom, not that big a fan of. <laughs> and Sure Hands, I'm not that big a fan of. But I'm not really a fan of his whole team. Um, but, you know, it's... There you go. I'm, I'm not a fan of Necro, to be fair. So, um, Thess has gone guard on the Ogre, which I like. And guard, guard, guard. And attack the Mighty Blow. So he hasn't taken a double, has he? Um... Which, I don't know, I would have taken guard on somebody who wasn't a blitzer. Um, just so you can get more guard later. But, you know, he's got, a, he's got a strong team for game one. Which, is, which has got to count for something. Follows and gets the lucky AV break to protect his guy. Yep, just one white because you can't have everything on a necromantic team. Hmm, why did he put this? Oh, he didn't, he didn't put that there. Could have served him, couldn't he? Um, he had me down. <laughs> So he's got he's got this guy trapped with a wolf nearby. And he's got these guys based up with a wolf there. So it's looking a bit like that it's pretty tricky putting the pressure on, isn't it? Because he's got a couple of guys surfable. Oh <laughs> goes forward then he thinks no thanks. <laughs> Cheeky wanna? Why not? Well, I'll tell you why not, because if he goes down, it's horrible. But then if he doesn't make the block, he comes in for the assist, he goes down and there's a big hole in the screen. So, not not a nice block to have to make, but I think it was the right call to make it. So yeah, tackle mighty blow on the goal. Something everybody loves to do. Gets the armor break because of it. Looking every inch of the war dancer, that guy. <laughs> he goes for the 4 plus 3 plus and makes it. He's herp derp base base basing. <laughs> I mean... Yes, it controls where he blitzes, but first of all, he can come back with a block tackle anyway, can't he? And not even the mine. But he goes for the risky route, or route if you're American. Gets the power with a mighty blow. See you later, prick. Okay, mighty blow didn't actually do anything, but it could have done. 
It was there in spirit, wasn't it? With all Mighty Blow. I'm torn between Mighty Blow and Guard for my next match. I really am. I'm leaning, leaning towards Mighty Blow, though, as you, as you may have guessed. Oh wow. Oh, so he died and he used the Kaz because it's a guard blitzer. Use the Kaz, use the Apo because it's a guard blitzer. And it failed. I do like Thessa's build, having 12 players and an Apo and three reasons. So Thessa's build was one of the best one of the builds that I like the most. Let's not say best builds, but one of the builds I like the most. Yep, didn't give a zombie, which is good. But I mean, you've got to do it. You know, you probably have to do it anyway because it's a guard blitzer. But, um, you know, it's worth it, isn't it? A guard blitzer is literally 110 TV. So 50 TV of Apo getting a 50 50 shot at it is value anyway. And when it stops a 40 TV zombie coming on the pitch, a fine decision. He's quite, he's quite thin here, isn't he? He's spread quite thin, Thessa. He's, uh, he's trying to push and pressure, but it's a little bit piecemeal. I'm a, I was just thinking, he doesn't really doesn't want a bonehead there. Might not be, might be a good idea to not bonehead. <laughs> and he does bonehead. That was a quite quite a nice spot for that ogre. I mean, he's not really going to be able to go past him, so it's not that bad. He probably just wanted a cage here. I don't know. I don't know where he goes. This is a bit tricky, isn't it? Yeah, back here. So he could have done that anyway, whether he'd uh, gone ahead or not. Really. Didn't frenzy trap himself, but did fuck himself because he didn't have block. Which I'm not a fan of. I can see why he'd start one with block tackle, but I would want, I think, wrestle and block is better. Like, you know, one wrestle by itself so it can get people down. And then one uh, one block mighty blow so he can attrition blitz. So he's given two dice on the ball. Only with block, but still. Doesn't get anything. Yeah, he couldn't go, could he? Because he was based up by the zombie. So it does use a reroll to go for the ball hit, which is fair enough. It's in the rain, isn't it? If you knock him over, decent chance to break AV. Bit of a. I thought it was a bit of a safety, but he's just an assist. Oh man, the old oneers. The old oneers coming out now. I had to do them, otherwise he can get served, can't he? So. Oh. <laughs> Disgusting one dice pal. Most people most people punch flesh golems and get nothing but pushes, and these ones are block fleshies and <laughs> get one D powered into two D powered. Disgusting. So yeah, this is getting tough now, isn't it, for uh, RTSD? Because now the, the human team is kind of back back together, encircling the undead, rather than just having a few guys over here and a few guys over here and a few guys here. When he went to this kind of area, they all just came back on him. One dice. I think I would have maybe he's like to have moved the ghoul, or is he going to potato? He's going to potato, isn't he? Oh man! There's one GFI. Only one. Oh, and then a dodge. Oh, we've seen a potato. <laughs>
Had to happen eventually, didn't it? This is like one of very few potatoes in in the first round. And I mean, he's a, it's not really a potato. Well, it kind of is a potato. It is an unprotected run in the opposing half, but he is protected by just being further away. So, you know, it's it's maybe he's not really a potato because it, it's protected by virtue of being unreachable, isn't it? <laughs> He's not just saying, please don't roll double skulls. Please, please roll double skulls, like, uh, like, uh, thingy did, Balsha. Live the potato dream. <laughs> Live the potato dream. <laughs> oh, dear. Thanks, Artemis Black. <laughs> um, right. Probably only gonna have time for three games tonight. Just realized. But. Oh, the calves. Get banged on. So now he gets the death in the extra player. So now, fucking fouling can happen. Cunting. Cunt of a fucking shithead. Fucking cunt. Cunt. Fucking cunt. Cunt. <laughs> cunt fucking beast. Thanks for that, last frogman. <laughs> <laughs> Greed is good. Greed is right. And um, in the moment, I'm Greed doing the last few works. replays. So yes, the, the the first round is is finished. Tom Brandhill. Um, it's hard because I'm trying to do the you know I'm, I'm doing the uh, trying to do the YouTube at the same time, so I don't really want to respond to everybody in chat, but I will do in between. Um, yeah, so he, he scores early, doesn't he? So Fess has set up for the two-one grind now, isn't he? Pretty much played it quite, quite calmly. I thought, um, you know, he like it was a bit, it was a bit scatter shot in that he had a few guys over here and a few guys over here and a few guys chasing the ball. But then once, uh, once RDSD went somewhere, he was then able to focus, focus the pressure. But then he did escape and. Uh, Fair enough. I mean, he's down to 10 players, which sucks, and down a guard, which sucks. But he's got he's got half a chance, and he three turns with two rerolls is very doable for humans. And also, but the rain the rain is bad, isn't it? But he's got sure hands and pass and catch and everything. So he's got half a chance at the two-one grind. The biggest problem with the replay casts is the setups that take forever. I guess I could comment on what they're trying to do, couldn't I? So he, you know, he's trying to stop the, the quick score. So he's got loads of players at the side, and then stronger players in the middle. But he's still left a big gaping hole between them. I would have maybe liked to have seen the flesh golems come one in. Um, but then if he does that, then you've really got to put. Um, the first column here in one as well, which means you could break down the outside. But if you break down the inside, you got walls. So I think I would, if I was him, I would probably defend at the middle a bit more to try to get the uh, wolves on the sideline action. Kaz, but not super important with it being a zombie and two reserves. I mean, he has funneled him in the middle, hasn't he, basically. But by putting these two here, he can't break through the outside. And, and he's left a big keeping hole to kind of force him to go through the middle. Um, whereas, I don't know, I think I think having having the fleshies one, you know, the fleshies in like a chevron would have encouraged him to go around the outside. Which then, if he goes down the outside, he will conserve or something, so... He has got three turns, so he doesn't need a scoring threat yet. 
as catchers at the moment behind. The problem with humans is they are agility 3 aren't they so however much you plan and try <laughs> you're still relying on H3 doing things. You did have three rerolls there so maybe maybe you could have done some GFI somewhere with somebody particularly the ball carrier. Of course you shouldn't make risks just because you can but um, this is this is nice isn't it? This is a nice blitz clear him completely to get the fleshy on the ball. Absolutely here. Oh, I'm not sure I like him there unless he's going to block him off. I would have just had him tagging the carrier. Um, not giving him a block to free. Even if it's a one dice block he'd rather the failure state. Ah, the failure state is pretty much the same isn't it actually. Maybe it's good to have him on somebody. Interesting. Didn't move anyone into scoring range first. Schoolboy error, wasn't it, really? I think... I mean, maybe he had plans for this guy. Maybe he had plans for this guy, but I think I would have got somebody into scoring range first. Uh, it's a KO. But that, that's exactly... That's humans all over for you, isn't it? You're all the two into a one. Elves would have made that play. Humans just fuck it up. Say that that say that definitely is a bit of a mistake. I mean, I don't know what he what his plan was. That turn. So you know, so if he's got other plans, but this this guy is even one square forward with both of these, they'd both be in scoring range, wouldn't they? And as it happens, <laughs> he doesn't really need to worry about being in scoring range now, seeing as <laughs> the uh, ghoul's got the ball. This, this lack of block is, is resulting in a lot of failures, but not armor breaks, I think. Uh, but yeah, I guess now it doesn't matter he didn't get in scoring range. But I think he should have got in scoring range. But if you're going to get smashed in the face by a flesh golem and then a ghoul pick it up, it doesn't really matter if he's in scoring range, does it? <laughs> but I still think he should have been. Both. Punch, punchy, punchy with mighty bow. Wow, ten, then double six, and then fails regen. So pretty, pretty good randor block on turn eight there for Fessa. Pretty good. Smack a go. Would we'll take the ball down. I'm sure he would have done. Huge cars. So, but I mean, so you know, it worked out well for our TST. He got his, he got his touchdown. He actually needed both reserves in the end to, to maintain eleven players. So, so the kill actually stops him being outnumbered in the second half. Uh, no, makes him outnumbered in the second half. Get fucked, you little cunt! <laughs> 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 Thanks. Thanks, Slate, again. Um, yeah, so that actually makes him men up. It would be 10v10 if it wasn't a kill, so... Going back to the rule of five. You know, just protect the good players. Slightly lopsided, isn't it, with the... Uh, I like to make it symmetrical somehow, but he hasn't made it symmetrical. I don't know if he just wants to watch the world burn, but... <laughs> he should have got upset otherwise, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he should have done. If he's gonna go, if he's gonna, if he's gonna go not symmetrical, maybe, maybe he literally could have done. <laughs> That's 
pretty good, Dr. Mono Bosco, yes. Um, so yeah, attack of Mighty Blow hits the ghoul. So that's what I mean, you know, I, I, maybe that's why I went asymmetrical, so that you didn't want the, uh, the sure hands ghoul to be hit. And you thought you might run around and hit because humans are pretty fast. But I don't know, I'd rather just have the more in the middle or something like that. This would have been a, very open if it had been an offset LOS, wouldn't it? But the thing is, um, Necro aren't elves. <laughs> he does have kind of three fast players, but they're not agile, so even if he breaks through here with a block tackle, which it looks like he's going to, he can't really capitalize. Well, he can get a, he can get a removal. And now he's got a two-player advantage. But he can't capitalize like an elf team would capitalize. He's just got the threat of the dog. Protecting his other ghoul now. So yeah, I guess that was why he had the asymmetrical bit there. Wow, re-roll there. Four re-rolls. Um, that was a pretty big re-roll to use on just like a 1D, one, one kind of greedy 1D block in a way. It was a pretty big re-roll to use with a potential overtime. I mean, you had four rerolls, so it's it's not it's not awful to use it, but you know, in the overtime format, um, I wouldn't have made either of those blocks. I wanna I wanna make somebody, you know, it'd have been a block without a block. It'd have been having to make. But you know, the payoff the payoff's good, isn't it? So it's it's not it's not wrong. <laughs> it's not wrong because you know if he makes a couple of powers it looks good. So he really he really got this ghoul deep. But now that the mighty blow tackle is deep, I'm sure the ghoul get more involved now. Claw mighty on a on a blitzer does nothing. Doesn't re roll this one dice. I think that a one dice with block on the ogre was a lot better than a than a one dice without block on the linos. Because it's just a much bigger payoff, isn't it? And less risk. Going straight for the the block mighty blow hit on the defenseless card. So this is running away from the wolves, but I mean they are movement eight, so this one will be straight back into it. And this guy is a bit more screwed, faced with a frenzy trap. Um, but you know you can block. You can put a guy in here and block, and then blitz with him if he really wants to get him back into play. So yeah, he's just gonna block the guard. I mean this this is fair enough. I expected the wolf to go further, further back. Has to re-roll that one in nine. Is he going to blitz the ogre? That's what that's what that blocks tell me is going to happen. Another removal. I 
Maybe he was thinking POW double GF I'd have based the ball. No, he, not, he didn't even fall. Uh, maybe if he'd had his reroll, he might have gone blitz double GF I'd have based the ball. I wouldn't have hated that. Basing the ball, basing an agility three guy um, with a flesh block flesh golem is pretty good, to be fair. He's got things in the way, hasn't he? And he's just relying on the block to clear the cool, so he's not going anywhere. Why well, he's handing off in the rain. Fucking humans, eh? <laughs> so I think maybe he's gonna go for the score there. Wild. I think I would have tried to uh, clear them, but fair enough, he didn't. That was his choice. You know, maybe he, maybe he thought it was... Like, you just see it like this. You don't know how long he talk, thought about it. And maybe he just thought he couldn't defend the ball. So the handoff was the right play. Gets the assist in, doesn't it? Yeah. He's just going to go for the 5 plus. Fuck it, 5 plus, you've got a reroll, you might as well. Or a 1D to get a scatter. <laughs> 5 plus, got a reroll. Oh wow, he's off again. He's off again, this ghoul. <laughs> I think I would have maybe just gone back behind these guys there. But, you know, you've got to admire the commitment, the commitment of getting forward. It's the power. <laughs> Live the potato. <laughs> glorious. <laughs> that was... That was a glorious potato, isn't it? He is the potato girl. He's just off on one. But you know, there's certainly an argument for getting it down the pitch there, isn't it? Because now he's got he's got people free and get two dice on it. Um, probably not the block, unless he's greedy. Been pretty greedy to hit with a block frenzy, wouldn't it? But you know, it might it might have paid off making the dodge first. Like I don't think anybody would do it. But it could have been the right play, couldn't it? Oh, gas. <laughs> this is getting starting to turn into a little bit of a dicing now, isn't it? Three cars, Apple failed, two KOs. Um It's looking really bad for the winner of the Rebel qualifying. Yeah, that's that's tricky, isn't it? That's tricky when you've got agility three and it's in the rain. This guy can potato and get run down by the uh yeah, so I like that block there, so then he can blitz the wolf so he doesn't get caught. No, he's not blitzing. I think I would have blitzed there and run up. This is me talking in the cold light of day, of course. Um, not playing in the match myself. I think I think this was the best play, was to blitz there and then run away because once you've knocked down the wolf, you can't get caught by anybody. And then some kind of dodging and passing and it would have been horrible.
This is looking pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, it's looking over, isn't it? at the end, no reason not to, um, you know, it, it was over, wasn't it, we just literally couldn't catch him, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't giving up or anything, so yeah, well done, well done RTSD, and commiserations to uh, the Rebel winner, unbelievable, um, so yeah, I mean, it, the, the cars were pretty were pretty bad, but it did make a lot more blocks. But then it kind of snowballed a little bit, having the having the man advantage. Um, I wouldn't say it was a dicing, but it it just started to get that way, didn't it? <laughs> towards the end, really, I think it started to started to get that way towards the end. Dodges were forty percent. Um, you need to do better than that. But then you know, there were th there were things there were things that could have been done differently on both sides. And uh, yeah, you know that both sides had good and bad dice, didn't they? And while it it started to look a bit one-sided towards the end, uh, you know, not take not to take anything away from RTSD. Um, so there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.